Getting chilled milk in India is a big problem. <laughs> Think about the last time you went to your refrigerator to get some milk for your cereal. And you grab that carton of milk, and it's so rancid, the first thing you do is throw that milk down the sink. And you're watching these white globs of milk crawl down your disposal, thinking, thank God I didn't drink that. Well, what's behind this bacterial growth is the lactose converts to, converts to lactic acid. And the lactic acid then curdles the milk protein. And even after pasteurization, that bacteria continues to divide and grow. So how do we prevent this from becoming a problem in our cereal every day? Well, it all goes back to the cows. It always goes back to those cows. <laughs> the sooner you chill that milk, the less problems we'll have in our cereal. And the reason is because chilling stunts the bacterial growth. So here in the United States, farmers have it easy. 24 hours of power, they milk the cows, and they turn on that milk chiller. In a place like India, it's a very different story. In India, they have such unreliable power that it's virtually impossible to get that milk to the market without dangerous levels of bacteria. And every Indian knows, as soon as they get that pouch of milk, the first thing they do is boil it. And yeah, it does take away a lot of the nutritional value that Indians depend on. So this is a big, serious problem in India. And the story I'd like to share with you today is how we went about over a six-year-long journey to come up with a technology to resolve this problem. So let me take you back to 2007. I was working in a startup in Kendall Square, and I started volunteering my time with a group of MIT engineers who were working on a solar technology, which was an engine made out of car parts that was... Um, that was generating electricity from the, from the sun's heat. And then we started participating in business plan competitions, and we went for the big kahuna, and we won second place at the MIT 100K business plan competition. I was so excited, I thought this was like guaranteed success for whatever we did, right? <laughs> Luckily, I didn't know any better. <laughs> this business plan was based on rural electrification. We were gonna electrify rural vi villages in India. So what do we do from there? Let me introduce you to my business partner. This is Serene Grama. He grew up in Romania. He emigrated to the United States when he was 16, and he was getting a master's at MIT. So what we did with the $10,000 of winnings from this business plan competition, Serene graduated from MIT, and I quit my job. I mean, come on, I had a guarantee from MIT, right? We, we took that money and went straight to India for a month. And we started going from village to village, exploring how we could apply this really cool technology in rural India. So here we're hosted by the uh, grape industry, the sugar industry, uh, nonprofits who are putting solar in, in rural villages. And then two weeks into that trip, a friend of a friend of a contact suggests, hey, you're in Bangalore, right? Why not call Bangalore Dairy? Bangalore Dairy? We didn't have anything to do on a ni at 9.30 in the morning that Saturday. So what the hell? I called the switchboard of Bangalore Dairy, and they put me right through to Mr. Sundaram, the managing director of Bangalore Dairy, tall dairy veteran, about two years from retirement, and he wanted to see us in the next two hours. So we rush over there, and he has 14 of his engineers waiting for us to explain in excruciating detail why it's so difficult to collect raw milk from 10,000 villages every day. Yeah, 10,000 villages. And so, sure, they could put uh, a, a traditional milk chiller into these villages, but if they try to turn that on and there's no power, they need a dedicated diesel generator to, uh, to, to make this work. And so, it's just not economically viable to put a diesel generator into 10,000 villages, never mind the 300,000 milk-producing villages throughout India. So let me take a step back and talk about kind of the macro problem of cold chain in India. And why are we in India? India has the largest number of people growing in the middle class in the world. Over the next five years, it's going to be growing by 67% and they're all going to be demanding more quality products, particularly when it comes to food. 
Here's a statistic to give you an idea of how large this problem is. In the United States, 80% of food that's grown on farms gets processed. Paul, I hope this is consistent with your, <laughs> with your stuff. <laughs> in India, just 6% makes it to the cities in a quality enough state to get processed. Every year alone, $13 billion of food gets spoiled. And a good percentage of that spoilage is milk. And India is the largest producer and consumer of milk in the world. So let's get back down to earth and let me introduce you to Niranjana. Niranjana lives about two and a half hours south of Bangalore. She owns two cows, and there are about 25 other farmers who also own two cows in that same village, maybe five cows at the most. And even with that growing market, it is impossible to get that milk to the market without dangerous levels of bacteria. So let me, let me show you why, and I'll bring you rural India for the next 30 seconds. They milk the cows in the morning and evening. That bacteria starts growing right away. All 25 farmers aggregate, bring their, that milk to the, to the village. This is my office. <laughs> and they test that milk for fat and volume, and then they race that milk 30 kilometers away to the closest chilling center, and they do a smell test. Imagine if your carton of milk said, smell test, approved. <laughs> so, what happens is they race this milk twice a day, and if they don't get this milk chilled within four hours, the bacteria kills that milk. India is averaging six hours. So, our objective was to come up with a technology to enable them to chill milk sooner to prevent this dangerous bacterial growth. And so now we had a meaningful problem to resolve instead of a cool technology looking for an application. And so what did we do after that epic meeting with Bangalore Dairy? Well, that started our six-year-long journey to come up with the technology to try to resolve this problem. And we went through many different technologies, and every technology we were like, yes, we nailed it this time. Here's a dose of reality. Let me take you back to 2008. We tried a technology called thermoelectrics. We just couldn't get those chips cold enough. That was a failure. Then we tried delivering ice to, uh, to these villages and using that solar panel to pump up that ice water up this, this rapid milk chiller. This is the very first prototype that we built to chill milk. But this was a logistical nightmare trying to deliver ice to all these villages. So, that was a failure. And then we got our big break. We got a purchase order from India's largest private dairy to build the very first high-tech, solar-powered milk chiller. And so we spent all of 2010 designing this thing, building it back in Boston. And let me show you how, it, how we designed this. So whenever we get electricity, the random intermittent electricity from the, from the sun, we would run a refrigeration cycle. That refrigeration cycle would then bring down a liquid coolant to below freezing. So now we're decoupling when we get the electricity and when we use that, that cold liquid coolant for chilling the milk. So when the milk arrives, even when, the, when, the, uh, when there's no power, we're still able to chill that milk by pumping that, uh, that coolant up this rapid milk chiller. So we, here, we built it in Boston, and we shipped it to India. Here we are installing it. We bring the managing director to come see this, this beautiful piece of technology, and he takes one look at that 2,000-liter thermal battery, and he says, guys, just that thermal battery is twice the size of any shed you'll find in our villages. What are you thinking? Oh, man. A year's worth of work down the drain in two minutes. The three of us, 2.30 at night, smoking cigarettes in the city with open sewage, trying to figure out a way out of this hole. And I don't even smoke. <laughs> Could we salvage anything from what we invented? And then two hours later, our Indian colleague, Rajat Gupta, suggests 
hey, we're, we have access to two forms of intermittent power here. One is solar, and the other one is the random power that we do get from the grid from India. Why not get rid of solar and just use the available power that we get from the grid? We'd cut our costs in half, and we'd be able to move forward on as, as a business. Sounds easy, but that was an ex excruciatingly painful process over the next two weeks to decide to get rid of solar. We started this company to be a solar company, not a milk chilling company. <laughs> it's funny, but it was, I was crying at the time. <laughs> My business partner and I were this close from just giving up. We just didn't think it was worth the effort if it wasn't going to be solar. But at the end of the day, we didn't have a choice. And we cut the cost from $18,000 unit price to $9,000 just by getting rid of solar. So, then we focused on, the, over the next two years, how to reduce the size and the cost of this thermal battery. And one of the ways we did it was making ice more efficiently. So, we're not storing electricity, we're storing thermal energy. And ice is a form of thermal energy. So you make thermal energy in your freezer. You put water in an ice tray, and those crystals, these ice crystals begin to form, and, but your crystals for, form in a very random way. The way we make ice today is every ice crystal interlocks with each other in such a compact way that we're able to get a lot more thermal energy into a small space. So uh, we went from 2010 with a 2,000-liter th thermal battery, chilling only 500 liters of milk, to two years later, a 500-liter thermal battery chilling 1,000 liters of milk. Huge gains in efficiency. So, when we kind of put solar to the side, it kind of unveiled to us the key to what we should be focusing on, which is the battery. And Solar was a failure, but we learned how to harness intermittent power from that, from that exercise. The ice delivery was a failure, but we invented this rapid milk chiller from that failure. So, ultimately, we, this technology resolves the quality issue by bridging the electricity gap with our thermal battery that you see in blue here, instead of a diesel generator. Now, the managing director of India's largest private dairy said to us, if you can actually chill milk for four months straight just using our intermittent power, then we'll give you a big order. Now, keep in mind, if we did this, it would be the first time in India's history where we're chilling milk at the village level without a diesel generator outside of a state called Gujarat where they have 24 hours of power. And I'm happy to share with you today that over the next two months, 50 villages will be chilling at the cow. Thank you. And the person who made the decision to purchase those 50 chillers was the same managing director who rejected the solar system. So, this story could have turned out a lot differently. My business partner and I started this company to be a solar company, and that didn't work out. And on the way to that sort of painful process of realizing we weren't going to be what we thought we would be, we ended up following a trail of inventions and discoveries that ultimately led to a technology that would resolve a big problem a problem we didn't even know existed seven years ago. And I can tell you one thing with certainty. If we hadn't spent the grueling hours applying these experiments in real-world conditions in rural India, we would never have gotten that technology out of the lab and into the village. And we're already starting to work on applying this thermal battery to chilling fruits and vegetables and vaccines. And this time, we're going to use solar. <laughs> <laughs> now, for milk, we created a win-win-win situation in India. It's a win for the environment, 
because they're chilling milk without destroying their pristine lands. It's a win for the dairy processors because they're making more money from the quality milk that they, re that they collect. It's a win for the consumers because they're drinking healthier milk. And most importantly, it's a win for the farmers because their livelihoods improve. Now, I hope you all, I hope you all come to India one day. And if you do, I cordially invite each one of you to come chill with us. <laughs> Thank you.